Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody to this session of Human Conversations introduced by the International Institute of Humanology. I am James Soule, the Creative Director of the Institute, and I will be moderating this wonderful panel today. Today's topic is working online and lessons and more. We are going to be asking four experts of different fields about this topic, and we're going to be going through di three different questions where people are going to give their opinions. And at the end, we will have a round for your, uh, your questions to be answered. So please hang in tight and listen to what they've got to tell you. I'm going to introduce to our wonderful, wonderful panelists. Let me start by introducing Eva Marzokova. Hi, Eva. Eva is a professional coach and humanology trainer currently residing in Switzerland. She is connecting with us and she will be giving her opinion. So thank you very much for being here with us today. Then may I introduce Max and Najera Jones. Hi, thank you for being here with us. Max is the owner and co-founder of Life Coaching Today, and she is connecting with us from the States. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Then, may I introduce Deborah Fairful. Deborah is the CEO and founder of Blissbot, and she is connecting with us from Australia. So thank you so much for being here with us today. And finally, may I introduce to you to Jessica J. Lockhart, the founder and director of Humanology and the International Institute of Humanology. She is connecting today with us from Panama. So hi, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you all. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, James. Let me just clarify a little detail. I wasn't supposed to be here today. We were supposed to have Monica Sands joining us all the way from uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, but I suppose the same way we had technical difficulties connecting to the internet today, maybe she had some technical difficulties as well. So sad as I am that she is not able to join us today, I will just give you my own um, answers to the questions and try and contribute as best as I can. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification, Jessica. Thank you. Perfect. So if we are all ready, let's begin. So like I said, the topic for today's panel is working online and lessons and more. So the first question is, working online poses challenges to most professionals. Given your experience, what would you say that the number one skill or strength is to excel at online working? Max, if you would be so kind to please begin with answering this question. I will. Um, I, I would say the challenge is staying focused and not getting distracted because you're online and most of us who are online work from home and there are 30 million things that can happen you know and because you're home your family believes you're home you're not doing anything but you're working online and then your friends are under the same impression so you have to stay focused you have to have a set time to do things a set time to take a lunch break a set time to get a certain amount of work done so you're not taking care of your personal life while you're working on the internet and that is a huge challenge not to be distracted you you don't want to be like squirrel oh well <laughs> squirrel and it, and it just happens or someone calling you on the phone or you chatting before you know it the whole day can go by so you have to set a calendar you have to be disciplined you have to have a set thing that you know that you're going to do and you have to be regimented with it. And so otherwise you won't get anything done. So don't get distracted. 
So show up and be present and stay focused. That's where I'm at. Thank you. Thank you, Max. I, I completely agree. <laughs> so, Deborah, if you would be so kind as to answer the same question. So, for me, I already had an online business, but when we went into lockdown in Australia, I guess it just came... I guess everything's just exemplified because I found the biggest thing was you can just get up, get dressed, sit in front of your computer. I've got children, but they're all older now. So they're from 16 to 22. They all take care of them. You know, they don't need me running around them anymore. So I think you can get really sucked into the whole online thing. And before you know it, you could be on there for 12 hours with, you know, a break for lunch. And so I think you've got to be careful not to just get completely sucked into it and go out for little breaks, rest your eyes, um, because you're spending so much more time in front of screens now. Remember to connect with nature. I think we were lucky in Australia because we were still able to go out for walks and things in the morning. So just, be, and that was great for our, our mental health. I think being able to go to the beach, um, sit in the backyard for five minutes, smelling, you know, look up at the sky, those sorts of things, because otherwise you can just be very consumed by working online when you actually um, don't have the normal things you do, like travelling into the city to go to your office and uh, going out for coffee and, you know, those sorts of things. So I think breaking it up a little bit too so that you, you stay fresh and you look after your body and your emotional and mental well-being. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Deborah. Thank you for that answer. Eva, same question. So it's funny because when Max started talking, uh, I thought like, shoot, I had the same thing on my list. And uh, that is self-discipline. So I have been working from home since the last four months. No, I had a 100% uh, job, which keeps me busy during the day. And then in the evenings, I was uh, doing my coaching hours with the clients. So actually, the, the thing that helped me to, to kind of uh, get, get all my assignments done was to plan my time to know exactly what time I want to start in the morning to do a little bit of exercise before to keep me you know energized and motivated then do a little break and stretching um, in the evening and then do my like uh, coaching hours in the prescribed uh, uh, time um, what I find is that if you work um, for some company which give you accesses and your PC access is quite restricted, it is quite easy, you know, unless you don't look for at your mobile or your personal, uh, personal computer, you can stay quite focused on the work you have to do. I think what is really challenging is actually not to get distracted by other online, um, um, how to say, feeds, you know, you can, you can uh, get easily distracted. So with uh, Facebook, with your friends' messages, with, you know, everything what's going on. So especially for people who work online, like uh, uh, independent entrepreneurs, um, I think like those really have to be careful if they need to follow the reply of their clients and so on, not to actually forget themselves in, in all that. So... This would be my um, answer. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eva. Jessica, same question. Thank you so much, James, and thank you to the three other speakers who gave the three of them part of my own question, my, part of my own answer. Yes, I agree with the three of them. Um, I would say those are the most needed skills, being able to both stay focused, but at the same time, take time for yourself, which is a very difficult balance to, to reach sometimes. But I would also like to add something else that to many people has been a struggle, and that is speaking in front of a camera. 
a lot of people find it extremely scary, it's extremely difficult. They get so nervous, they get so scared. I was, for example, uh, chatting with my teenage daughter who had to suddenly shift into an online school system where all her classmates were on the online uh, and had to show their faces through the camera because teachers wouldn't accept written answers to their comments. They wanted to make sure they were there and they were active. So to them, that was really, really, really scary. Although in countries like the US, and I don't know about uh, Australia, Deborah, maybe you can clarify that later, but uh, although like in countries like in the US, a lot of students get some uh, public speaking training in schools, there are many other countries like Spain or Switzerland where public speaking is never taught. So people are expected to know how to address an audience, how to speak in public, how to use a camera, how to use their voices to convey messages without any real training. And that can be really scary and pose a lot of difficulties to people. People who might have fantastic grades when doing written examinations might really screw up when having to speak in public or do oral testing because they don't feel comfortable and they're not used to doing it. So I think that is also one of the key skills that many people are gonna have to learn real fast if they want to master this online world that uh, COVID-19 has brought to us so suddenly. <clears throat> Sorry, so I would say that one of the main skills to have to develop these days might be speaking in public and using this method. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you for that answer. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is, what is your best advice for people who are now starting to work online? Deborah, if you could please be so kind as to answer this question. Oh, your microphone's muted. Perfect. I believe you really have to, or it's a good idea to embrace the technology that there is. And I agree with Jessica too. It's a matter of, um, I know when I started working online and I'm not in my normal studio that I have where I have all the lighting exactly correct and my computer at the right angle, knowing what lipstick suits you best. Because when you present yourself and you feel good about yourself, um, I think that 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 helps you to work online because you feel more confident in that. There are certain uh, things that you need to learn about presenting on Zoom, for example. So uh, I think getting across that's really important and embracing the technology that's there. For example, we're looking at doing an international wellbeing summit early next year and there's so much technology that's already there to help you work online because people have really even zoom i've seen it's improved so much in the last few months there's so many um developments to support you in working online so you don't have to reinvent the wheel yeah and just embrace it because i think it's fantastic the way we can all connect for example um there's just so many advantages uh, I was part of the Trans Tech Conference was based in the US. That was an amazing event with networking and breakout rooms and centre stages. That was all done online with technology. So I guess embracing it and just practising and even if things aren't at your very best, just keep going because you'll know if you look back on the past three months, you'll see all these little incremental improvements. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. That was very interesting. Max, same question. For me, I, I, the advice that I would give for um, starting or beginning an online business would be to work on your confidence. Um, I think the biggest issue for people is seeing on screen you know a lot of a large people large amount of people suffer from self-esteem so one of the reasons they would avoid it 
because they don't want to see themselves on screen. They put the sticky note over the camera, and all these things go on. So just to prepare yourself for it, just start sending messages and going live with your family members so you get used to seeing yourself on screen. So you get used to starting up your Zoom, starting up your camera, practicing. In the United States, when a lot of my, um, my clients are teachers and they have to teach um, online now with the students. So a good thing to do is to make up games or stuff for people to stay alert, the person that you're speaking with, and so that you stay alert. So one of the things that I did was to help them find ways to connect, get comfortable with connecting online, get comfortable with keeping everyone engaged, just little things that you practice with before you actually go live. So that when you have to go live and, and deal with your clients, you're a professional, you're a pro, because you've practiced with your family. <laughs> so those are just little things. And just to um, be put yourself in a mindset that the person is still with you, you're still connected, you're just not in the same room. So the more you practice ahead of time, the more confident you become. So practice confidence. Thank you, Max. Thank you for that answer. I, I'll be calling all of my relatives from now on trying to do that. <laughs> Did you, have, you have to call them. It catches them off guard. Go into Facebook Messenger. You know how you can do the video from Facebook Messenger? Most people have never used it. So when they see it ringing, they're like, oh, <laughs> what is that? And they have to answer. So have some fun with it. I believe in having fun with everything, but catch them off guard. <laughs> that's true, that's, that's a good point. Although I think that they might end up blocking me, but <laughs> I'll give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eva, same question. Well, in addition to what ladies mentioned, uh, I would start with having a good humor and patience good humor, to take it easy, to see yourself, how you look like, and uh, when you have some technical difficulties, you know, so not to lose the, you know, not to lose your confidence, not to lose your yeah, good humor of the day. And then patience with all these uh, technical toys. There are so many new tools. Uh, as Deborah said, uh, they are being constantly upgraded. You always have something new going on there so you know just uh, just be patient and and try and learn i can imagine that for some people this period was maybe um, a good push to get online including myself because before i was coaching mostly like um, in the same room one to one and uh, actually this uh, coronavirus situation was a great opportunity for me comfort zone and starting to do my coaching online and uh, it worked so great that uh, you know now it has just became um, like a more natural uh, mode of working for me and because I live in a small village in the mountains where you really have to be motivated if you want to see me to get there, actually working online has, uh, has made it easier to acquire new clients and so on. But at the beginning, you know, there was a big uh, leap of faith uh, for me. So there were a few times when the technology didn't work, where we couldn't connect, uh, then, you know, for the first time, it was a little special to see the second person, um, you know, sharing something personal uh, over the Zoom or Skype. But um, as a time goes, with a good, good humor and patience, you just overcome it and you improve and you can do it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that answer, Eva. I think we all experience technical issues and difficulties with all of these things nowadays, especially like you, like all of you are saying, we're having to adapt all, to things online. So I think that's a, that's a very interesting point. Maybe, Jessica. Maybe, James, sorry if I may add one more thing. 
is maybe or don't overestimate your importance or how you look online. Because sometimes we just focus so much how we look like or when we make some posts, who will see it, who will give us like, what will people think about us. And we think that we are the middle of the universe if we post something online. Uh, so just, you know, take it easy. And, you know, just be aware that all the people think the same and everybody is the most concerned about themselves, not about you. So you, you really have, you know, you don't have to, to be uh, to, to get out of your comfort zone. Nothing bad will happen if you make a wrong video or some post which is maybe not you know, as funny as, as you would like it to be. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for that. Jessica, same question. Thank you, James, and thank you, ladies. Very insightful questions that have me thinking. I agree with all of you again. Of course, couldn't be any other way. And if I may, I would like to add, not really say that I have the right answer. I think if we combine the four answers, we're going to get someplace. <laughs> and that's the whole idea of this uh, human conversations, that we combine all the answers to get a more complete response. So one thing that I would like to say is, yes, we are working online, but behind the screen, there's still a human being out there. Everybody watching us, everybody hearing us, everybody listening to us, everybody reading us later, they're all human beings, the same as you. So I would like to emphasize that we need to connect. Even virtually, we still need to connect. And anybody starting, I would, I would say, listen, don't think about who's going to see me. Just focus on one person like you would do when talking in public. When you're making a public presentation, people usually advise you to focus on one ideal listener. Well, you can do the same thing while talking online. You can just imagine one interlocutor, one person who's listening to you, one person who's watching you, and just talk to that one person. Create that human connection. Because at the end of the day, even if we're connecting virtually, we are trying to connect. Like I'm talking to you right now and I'm trying to look into the camera and speak with my eyes and my gestures, you know, I tend to move very much. So I want this to be a conversation, not just a speech. And I think if you're starting to work online and you have to com communicate using uh, a camera and using this media, it's good to remember that you're communicating with other human beings. Having said that, I would also like to highlight another aspect which is we're working online and the first, the first time we start working online, we're exactly like you. This is new technology. We weren't born knowing how to use it. So give yourself the time to train and learn and make mistakes. Everybody's on the same boat in, in this situation. Yes, for example, Deborah, as she just told us, she's had a school for a long time. She might be more savvy than um, maybe Eva, who just said, I started working online four months ago. But that doesn't matter. When you start a new job, you're always new. So what? You will learn. And you will learn by doing. If you just remain scared of these things and never use them, you will never learn. You will never acquire the expertise you, you see other people having. So, as Eva said, give yourself the chance to really do it and start feeling a bit more comfortable with it. And, you know, the technology that we're starting to use now, I believe, is going to last. Because, well, we don't know how long COVID is going to be out there, but we've already realized that uh, this new way of communicating and teaching is powerful too. And people somehow lost their fear to learning online. I am getting more and more clients who are over 55 years of age. And they're starting to use the media, the social media and the internet to learn new things too. Before it was like, I don't know how to handle that. And now you see grandmas and grandpas communicating with you, connecting online, texting you on WhatsApp, making comments on Facebook. I think
think this is here to stay, guys, and we better learn how to use it. Let me put it this way. When the telegraph or the telephone was first invented, people would look at the devices and be kind of scared. That's the devil's work, they would say, literally. And they were terrified of using your telephone. At the beginning, you know, because they had the mouthpiece and they had this thing to put on their ears, it was like, hello? <laughs> and I think the new technologies are somehow the same thing. We just have to use them and we just have to give it a try, considering that it's just a new mode of communication and we'll get used to it. Remember when we used to say, I'll never have a cell phone. Ah, no way. I like real human connection. Who doesn't have a cell phone today? Tell me. I mean, this is part of progress and we can't stop progress. The world is moving and we'd better move with it or we'll just be left behind. I think a lot of people are realizing this and are really getting onto this wagon. And that's, sorry, my answer, that was a little bit longer. <laughs> no worries, thank you. Thank you, Jessica, thank you for that answer. Yes, the world never stops, it keeps on going, and we evolve, we adapt, we learn. So, of course, the technology, technology is also going to change, and we can see that with the example you just gave us. So thank you. Thank you for that answer. Let's move on to the third question. So our third question of the day is, what do you think helps keep a flow, keeps flowing a constant with contact with others? Sorry, let me repeat that. <laughs> I jumbled up my words. Sorry about that. Sorry for, my for our audience as well. Like we just said, we're learning. I'm also learning. So, let me repeat. The question is, what do you think helps keep a flowing contact with others, with clients, with team members, etc., when working online? Eva, if you could be so kind as to answer our question. Okay. So, my response would be, communicate. Even though we moved to the online world, to keep contact, we need to communicate. So the only thing that has changed is maybe the form of communication, but, and maybe the style or the, the frequency a little bit, but really schedule the time to communicate. I have been very lucky to work with a company who mastered this challenge very well. And uh, there was a lot of communication uh, going on, like since the whole, you know, home office setup or since the whole COVID thing. And uh, the communication was organized on many levels. So first of all, we got the very good communication from the senior management. Basically, we get several emails from the top per week, but regularly, like there is a big communication every Friday. To, to keep us informed but like we don't know something, you know, like I always had the feeling like we know, you know, they are taking care of us, they are telling us the things ahead, there is a two-way communication so we could ask any questions, raise any concern, all of that. On the team level, uh, we have a regular like um, Skype meetings uh, twice a day and it's just 15 minutes but uh, it's great because it keeps us connected and um, it feels that when somebody needs help, you know, can have some space to address it. And then at the end of the day, it's also more efficient for the, for the team because if you devote twice 15 minutes per day, then you actually can save a lot of time during the day, not getting questions from everybody, you know, during the, during the whole day. So, again, I would just say schedule the, the communication and, well, this is, in the, this is in the company context. Thank you, Eva. Thank you for that answer. Same question, Deborah. Uh, we can't hear you. Yeah. 
I, I just try to emulate exactly what we do in the office online. So when we work in the off in the city, we've got an office in the city, normally speaking. So we would have a daily stand up where, uh, so in tech, people stand up and say just a quick thing. You go around in a circle and say what you're doing. So my team meets every day at ten o'clock. So we just do that uh, remotely. We just dialing with. Zoom, have the quick stand up and then on Tuesday we have a longer team meeting so we just have that online and I try to say I say to them just uh, call me or text me or email me if you've got a question because in an office you just sort of lean over and say oh hey what do you do about this so they say we'll just text me or just we'll just on Zoom we'll just have a quick you know five minute conversation on, on Zoom so being very open and available like you would be in a normal office, but you just do it with technology. And I found that we have been so productive over these last three months. I think even more productive than what we would normally be in an office because we don't have the travel time. We're very focused. We have lots of great communication through all those other ways. And I, I found it's, I've been absolutely amazed at how well it's worked. Yeah, taking the whole uh, company online. Yeah, it's been a good experience. Just by keeping open um, communication and the two, you know the flow being available. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. Yeah, Pleasure. Right now, we're we're all dependent on telephones and computers and texting and Zoom. So thank you, thank you for that answer. I think a lot of people will will consider using Zoom and things like that, a little bit more of a conversation rather than such a formal thing as a lot of people tend to associate it with. So thank you. Thank Max, you. same question. We can't hear you. Give me a minute. Perfect. Um, communication, like the other ladies, the other panelists, the other ladies were saying, communication is good. Um, Using the correct form of as a way that they communicate. Um, I communicate. Get it. So keeping open communication and understanding how you communicate with a person and what that person's best way of communication is, and also just getting clarity. With my team, we have a meeting every morning at 10.50, and we just check in. We say what's in our space and what we're working on, and that helps you know, the team to know what you're working on, and it helps them to know what's in your space, what's bothering you, what's happening. So it's still communication, but it is a more precise type of communication to get clarity. So everybody knows what they're working on, we have growth and we can grow together. And at some point, people will reach out to say, hey, this is what you said was in your space. How can I help you? Or do you want a minute to coach? So communication is key, but having a precise way to communicate. It's like, is it email? Is it text? You know, what is the best way to get in touch with you? Or what's the best way to communicate with you? That's what I find to be a good thing. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for that answer. Yeah, so I, I think that right now in companies, people are trying to check in on their employees a little bit because, well, it's what we say here at the Institute that humans, us people, we're the motor, we're the motor of companies. So it's, it's important to try and check in with everyone. So thank you. Thank you for that answer. Jessica, same question. Thank you, James. Yes, precisely. Checking on in people, uh, checking in on people. Um, communication is key. Yes, I totally, fully agree. But what kind of communication? Asking people, you know, where are you with your work? How far did you get? Are you finding any difficulties is important. It's fundamental, like Max just commented and Eva said before. It's very important to make people feel that you're watching over them and that you're there to support them. 
But I would also recommend having a very human, personal kind of communication channel created. One channel in which you chat about non-work related topics, like maybe one coffee morning every week, and uh, you have this virtual cup of coffee and you get together and you actually ask people how they're feeling, how they're dealing with things at home. Is everything okay? Are you physically managing things? Um, are you overwhelmed by work? Uh, is there anything we can do for you to help you? Because when we're in the office, we see one another. And we always have these little chats, you know, maybe we go to the coffee maker and we, we chat for a few minutes. Oh God, I'm so tired. I drank so much last night at the party, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, whatever, you know? And that human communication, we some, sometimes neglect to have it when working online. And it's important to keep it up too. It's important to let other people know that we still see them as human beings and not just co-workers, that we care about them as people as persons. So I would suggest, I would recommend that all company owners or team leaders organize or set a little time aside to create those spaces where people can meet. But not just that. I would also recommend one-on-one, -on -one, little tiny one-on-one -on -one sessions or opportunities because there might be situations that people don't feel comfortable talking about or discussing in public and uh, they might not feel comfortable sending you an email telling you I'm having difficulties with whatever. So if you're a team leader and you, or you are a boss or something, you have people working for you, it might be a good idea to just set some time aside, like on a rotational basis. Maybe, you know, you'll start with uh, A, B, C, D, D, go down the... <laughs> alphabet connecting everybody with uh, the first letter in their names under that letter and then just having a little short chat with them on a regular basis like once every two weeks just to make sure they're okay just to make sure you give them the opportunity to ex express whatever it is that they're going through so I would say communication is paramount in two basic senses not just work-related communication but also human communication at a more personal level. It could be that some people don't feel comfortable communicating back to you. That happens, you know, but that happens in the office too, right? Some people feel more comfortable just shooting out an email to you saying I have this problem than telling you face to face. Other people feel more comfortable doing just the opposite, looking you in the eye and saying, you know what, this is bothering me because instead of writing it down. So because the circumstances in the world scenario forced us to go to this uh, new uh, online world, well, we have to make sure we create opportunities for everyone so that they all feel listened to and uh, cared for. Uh, I think that would be my answer. I think that is what could keep the human connection alive, the flow of communication alive in an online uh, distant world. And yes, I know many countries are already opening up or reopening up, but I believe this might be temporary. I think there's going to be more and more online working in the future, not because the world will completely close again, but because the online method will survive. And there will be people working from home on a more normal basis than before the COVID, before the pandemic. And uh, well, as uh, members of teams and as team leaders, we need to learn new skills and we need to facilitate new situations because that's part of our job. I hope I answered the question. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Of course, of course you did. <laughs> thank you. I, I agree with all of you. So thank you. So that actually concludes all of our questions for the panelists. However, we do have some questions from our audiences that I think you might want to answer. So shall we go for it? Okay. So with, it, with these questions, because they're from the public, 
anybody, please feel free to uh, answer. Just unmute yourself and just go for it. Perfect. So the first question is, so they're asking us, how do you prevent the so-called Zoom exhaustion? Uh, I th yeah, I was going to say, I think that relates to uh, talking about what I was speaking about before, about taking little spaces, because I do find that if I'm online a lot and speaking to people a lot and taking a lot of meetings, you do feel exhausted and your energetic system does feel depleted because I think the digital world... Uh, it's not a natural world, and that's why I think you need to balance it out with taking those spaces. Uh, it could be just a walk to make yourself a cup of coffee or sitting outside if you can to have lunch or just uh, even taking three deep breaths every hour. So I think it's nice to take a little space hourly. That might be just the three deep breaths something every morning or afternoon. So it might be a little coffee break, um, afternoon tea, morning tea. And then daily at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, I'm a big believer in morning rituals where you set up your day and uh, you do a meditation or read something beautiful, something inspiring that really fills your soul and sets you up in the best way possible for the rest of the day. And also at the end of the day where you maybe do a meditation or some gratitude writing or something or even sitting for 10 minutes and working out what's really going on for you and how you feel and processing things letting go and moving on in a more flowing way so I think taking those spaces and then you know weekly you might take half a day off at the weekend to go on a picnic or do something beautiful um, and then yearly making sure you have a good holiday if you can so just taking those spaces throughout your life um sort of like rituals to balance things out. Anybody else? Oh, I think Jessica wants to answer. Go for it. Yes, I do. I want to add on to what Deborah said. I totally fully agree with you again. See, we're uh, like-minded people, we can see. I will add just two more things that I think could also help. The first one is stretching. You know, they say it's bad manners to stretch in public, but it's important when you get up for the cup of coffee to really stretch your muscles, to really move your body, because we spend a lot, of, a lot more time sitting now than before. Before, even if we just went to the other end of the office or we just walked to the office, we're moving, we're moving more. So in order to prevent that Zoom exhaustion, I would recommend people to stretch their muscles and move their bodies. And if you want to dance a little bit while you're, you know, standing up in those little pauses you make, it's even better because your body will re-energize re itself. So I would recommend stretching and moving. And one more thing that I would suggest is, okay, a lot of people get exhausted because working online requires a huge effort and a huge amount of energy because they're either scared of it or they're not comfortable, they're out of their comfort zone that I've already mentioned before. So whenever you're gonna be working online, ask yourself, okay, what is it that I'm feeling? Am I feeling scared? Am I feeling angry? Am I feeling, what feeling am I, do I have right now? And where in my body am I feeling it? Am I feeling a little heavy? Um, heaviness in my head? Am I feeling a little pit in my stomach? What is it that I'm feeling? Because that is going to tell you what kind of reaction you're having to the, to the action you're implementing right now. And if what you're feeling is fear, because you are afraid you're going to make a mistake, you're afraid people are not going to like you, you're afraid, whatever reason, you have to work on your fear. Maybe if what you're afraid of is uh, using the computer, you need to get some more training. If what you're afraid of is not being able to speak clearly and you're afraid you're going to start mumbling, for example, well, then maybe you need to get into our institute's uh, website and um, purchase one of our trainings on how to speak in public and then learn skills and improve them. So you're not that afraid, so you feel more certain, more comfortable. If you have any other kind of negative limiting feelings 
or emotions, you might have to deal with them so you can finally relax when doing this work. Because if you're relaxed and you're enjoying it, like Max said before, you'll hardly get any exhaustion. I think the exhaustion comes when there's no passion. Because those of us, and please correct me, I was going to say ladies, but James, you can also add to this because you've been online and working online for quite a while now. Whenever you're passionate about something, you don't get tired. It's like, you know, you can keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. So if you're feeling Zoom exhaustion, it might be because you're not enjoying it. You're not passionate about the work you're doing. So analyze yourself. Try to see what it is that makes you feel uncomfortable or whatever and deal with it. That's what I would say. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for that answer. I think the audience will appreciate it, so thank you. Any, uh, anybody else would like to answer this question or shall we move on to the next? Well, I just wanted to say that one of the things that is good is to have a ritual, whether it's exercise or whether it, it is doing something spiritual, because a lot of times Zoom exhaustion comes when we're taking on another person's energy, even though it is through camera, it, it, it is a, not a normal experience. So it can be exhausting. And, it, and, and most of it is what we do to ourselves before the actual meeting starts, but having a ritual of meditation or stretching or dancing or something keeps us alert and, or just having some water near you. So you can say, okay, let me take a sip of water. So some type of ritual that keeps you connected with the other person, even if you have to say, so what I understand you're saying is, you know, so these are the little things, the little rituals that work to keep us clear. Thank you. Anybody else would like to answer this question or shall we move on to the next? Yeah, okay. Uh, Eva? Uh, I'm fine. I mean, everything has been said. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Maybe to mention my favorite, it is dancing in the morning. Uh, so, you know, putting up music and just you know jumping and moving well now i can't because i have my uh, ankle in the you know fixed after an injury but uh, when i could it was my favorite way to start a day because it's a happy music it energizes you it makes you feel happy and also with technology what you can actually do is you feel alone you can schedule this type of ritual with other people so then you are not alone. So, okay, we get more online activities, but, you know, it can kind of create some positive connection at the beginning of every day. And then in front of or before uh, every meeting or every like online coaching session, what I found useful, it was really to recenter myself to see, okay, I mean, the ladies already mentioned it. How do I feel? You know, and uh, what am I bringing to my to my next meeting or to the next session? And uh, that helps to connect better with the with the person on the other side of the of the screen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that answer. I think I'll try the dancing bit next morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> We can create our own private group. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the next question from our audience. They have asked us, how do you make sure that you have the right tools? Well, let's get a little clarity in that question. How do you make sure you have the right tools for going online, coaching? What do we have? Because it's always good to know the vehicle so we can put the right tools in. So I guess I would ask for some clarification, the right tools for what? Yeah, I agree with Max. And while people find or, or give us an answer, if they do online, I would, um, I would take it from the point of view of, 
how do I know I have the right tools if I never worked online? Maybe there are better tools out there. I think that people feel a little overwhelmed by the huge amount of tools there are out there. For example, people have approached me and said, you use, uh, you use Zoom, but there's also BeLife, and there's also WebEx, and there's also this and that, da, 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 da. How do I know which one's the best one? How do I know which one I should use? You know, so that kind of question poses a lot of stress on many people too, because they're not 100% sure that they're doing the right thing. Once again, there's no formal training. Once again, we've had to just jump into the pool and do things. I don't know if this is the exact uh, question the person was asking, but just as uh, something that it inspired in my head, I think it's important to realize that there's no right or wrong answer here. I mean, just try the tools, whatever tools you have, for whatever reason, imagine you're working for a company like Eva said she is, and she's been given the tools to use. Well, if you've already been given the tools, maybe you can't choose, and you have to just work with whatever it is that you have. But if you haven't, if you're trying to create something online, if you're trying to work on your own, talk to others, talk to other professionals and just ask them what worked for you. What, this is what I'm trying to do, what worked for you, and then try it, give it a try. And if it works fine, great. And if it doesn't, move on and try something else. So like in everything else, this is a trial and error kind of situation. I would recommend that you have an open mind, that you don't focus on just one tool, that you give yourself the opportunity to try different things and see what works and what doesn't work for you. Because we're all different. Some of us are more less savvy than others. Uh, some of us are more uh, in tune to certain types of tools than others. It's like, what do you like best? Do you like Macs or do you like PCs? You know, it's like, Windows, you know, it's up to you. So try it. Try different things and see what works for you. I don't know. I hope I answered the question somehow. <laughs> and uh, James, if they, if they don't clarify the question, maybe we can give them a little time because it sometimes takes a while for people to answer. And unless anybody else wants to answer, we could uh, move on to the next question and give some time to the person. Of course. I've been checking the comments just in case to see if they clarify it. So if you ladies would like, we can, we can move on to the next question, just like Jessica said, so we can just give this person a little bit of time to clarify and then we can go back to it. Is that okay with everyone? Wonderful. Okay, so the next question that we've got is, I am not tech savvy. How do I handle this change? Well, I'll jump in. I, I, I believe we, talked, uh, we touched on it a little bit. And we said it's good to practice. And to, for me, if, if I want to do something that I have no clue of what I'm doing, I will find someone <laughs> who is... 100% um, aware of how to do whatever it is that I need to do that I'm not comfortable with. So whether I'm tech savvy or cooking savvy, I'm not, but whatever the savvy is that I wish to become, I align myself with people who are savvy. And most people are fortunate enough to have teenagers. Yay! <laughs> so Grab a teenager, grab someone who's tech savvy, align yourself with the people who are doing the very thing you need help or assistance with. And then you don't have to be tech savvy. And the old saying is, it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> so you can ask me to do anything. I will find the people I know, align myself with them, and then come back to you and say, here, yeah, I'm an expert. So it's just reaching out and finding the people who are tech savvy and dragging them back to your den. You're like, look, I need help. <laughs> Thank you, Mag. Thank you for that answer. I believe Deborah wanted to answer the same question. 
Sure. So I was just going to say to, to be really kind to yourself because I've been on a steep learning self, even though I'm in a tech business and everything, with uh, going online regularly, it's, it has been a steep learning curve for me. And so in the last three months, I think sometimes we sometimes uh, can feel like we're not where we want to be. Whereas if we look back and think, well, actually I know more than I did a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, it can be a little bit kinder on yourself and to be really kind with yourself during the process as well. Because I know in our house, we didn't have a very good internet initially and then we've just got an improved internet. So all these things that we've needed to do, we've it's been like a unfolding journey. So being kind to yourself on that journey just as you would when you're learning any other new skill when you're learning exercise or learning to meditate or learning a new work skill you got you need to be kind and not frustrated with yourself for where you're at or if you are acknowledge that feeling i guess and let it pass and just think well this is part of the process because technology things do happen i've been in a few different situations things do go long wrong at the last minute and it's not it's nobody's fault it just kind of happens and just uh yeah just having a lot of compassion and kindness around that journey and process and keep trying because you will get better and that you get that sense of mastery <laughs> can i add something I would like to add, Deborah, that we also need to develop our flexibility and creativity. I mean, here we are today. We were supposed to be streamlining on Facebook, and we're not because, well, the internet decided to not cooperate or the connection or whatever. So what we're doing is we're finding another solution. So be ready to improvise. Be ready to be flexible. Be ready to be creative. The world is not going to die because you're having difficulties. It's okay to have difficulties. It's okay to face problems. It's okay to have surprises. Just sail them, surf the difficulties, and find another solution. And if you can't do it today, it's okay. You'll do it tomorrow. If you can't streamline today, <laughs> just record it and share it tomorrow. So, yes, also flexibility and creativity, I would say. Yeah, and I would like to add that maybe what actually seems as a difficulty at the beginning can become a big opportunity in the long term. So I'm sure like how many people uh, were facing some difficulties because they had to go to the home office and for instance, they couldn't print. Okay, well, so they found other solutions how they could you know, create documents in a different form. And then at the end of the day, this is called innovation. And in the long run, this is this will help the companies or this will help the individuals as well. So I think that what we sometimes see as a difficulty can actually become a way how to do things smarter or easier or faster um, in the long run. So experiment and... Uh, let let the surprise come. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for all of your answers. I can see that the person that wrote the question, the previous question, has actually clarified it for us. So let me just read what they wrote. Okay, so it says, I am overwhelmed by all of the material out there. I tried several tools, but none of but none worked fine. I need to teach a group of students. I teach Bollywood dancing, and I can't seem to be able to work online. I hope that clarification helped all of you. So whoever would like to answer, please just go ahead. Okay, I will just say what I said before. Uh, talk to us. Talk to the people who are working online and teaching online, and we might be able to offer you some solutions that worked for us that might be different from the ones you tried. So talk to the people who are doing it. Learn from others. Um, I was just... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
I was just going to say my daughter actually is a dance teacher and she had to take all of her work online and initially it was really difficult, she said. It was, it was just a really hard process but she stuck with it and uh, she just taught her last online dancing um, lesson today because she, they're all going back into uh, having a sh live studio situation but she said that uh, we did get a better internet that really helped things but she learned things and evolved along the way and it's working really really well now so it was a process but she definitely said it was so difficult at the beginning so it definitely can be done with time and practice and if you want to I can um, perhaps get some tips from her and I can share them with you. I can give them back to Jessica to share if that's helpful. Thank you, Deborah. Eva, I believe you wanted to answer the same question. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I have nothing revolutionary to add to these people. I was just surprised in the past months like how many online uh, courses actually were created including uh, movement activities, including uh, yoga or, or dancing that you are mentioning. So I don't have any like a concrete tip to give you like uh, use uh, this tool or, or that tool, but uh, what the lady said, well, just uh, look, uh, look around what has been created. There are tons of, of courses on, on YouTube and, and Facebook today and uh, maybe some of those creators will be happy to share how they created them and how they overcame the, the challenges uh, in space and recording it and managing groups of people. Thank you, Abba. Thank you for that answer. So if we have no more replies to that question, shall we move on to the next one? Perfect. Okay, so the next question that we've got is, what was your greatest difficulty when working online and how did you overcome it? That's a really good question. <laughs> I'm trying to decide which one was my, my worst difficulty. <laughs> I've been thinking about it. Which was my greatest difficulty? <laughs> I had quite a few minor difficulties. Uh, maybe not one huge one. <clears throat> maybe the technical difficulties were the hardest for me. I've had a lot of pro trouble with uh, internet connections throughout the world. As you might know, I lived in quite a few different countries and sometimes connection is connecting to the internet is not easy. And uh, if you have to work online and you don't have a fantastic connection, that can make life very, very difficult for you. And as you can see today, because today we couldn't connect uh, Zoom to Facebook to streamline the, the panel. Mm, and that makes it difficult because people are counting on seeing you, people are counting on connecting with you. If you have a one-on-one -on -one session with a client, and the internet doesn't work, then you're like, okay, so what do I do now? That has been quite frustrating. And uh, maybe the, the lesson learned and the way in which I overcame that was what I said before, for, first flexibility. Well, if my internet connection is not working, maybe the phone one is working and I can connect the computer to the phone or I can just work on a WhatsApp uh, call instead of using Zoom. So being more flexible and trying to find other ways to do things. Uh, the second thing is, of course, to try and get the best possible technology out there. Although in some countries, the best is not good enough either. <laughs> and uh, well, that's as far as it can go. Uh, third, another way I, I used to try and overcome this difficulty is, well, finding different ways of doing it. I said, well, if I can't use Zoom, I will use WhatsApp, but maybe my phone is not working either. Well, sometimes I might have to tell my client, we're going to have to reschedule, but why don't you answer these questions in the meantime and send me the answers? And like that, well, maybe, you know, we can't connect online because the connection is really poor, 
but we can send uh, one another emails and I can somehow coach you or I can get the information to read in the meantime. Or why don't you go ahead and read this book while I get my internet connection fixed? You know, it might take one or two days and that's going to give you some food for thought and might help you grow. I know it's not the perfect solution. It never is. But reality is, like we always said here in humanology, you know, reality is the way it is and uh, you can fight it and you can get upset and you can get angry and exhaust yourself and use up all your energy fighting reality and at the end of the day be exhausted and not solve anything or you can just take it as it comes and say well what is it that I can do not what is it that I cannot do I already know what I cannot do I know it's not working I'm not gonna waste my time uh, crying over it or getting upset or getting angry I'm just going to try and find the solution and uh, even though this is not the answer to the question, you know, the answer would be, what did I do to overcome the problem or solve it? I would like to emphasize that it's highly important to not let yourself be carried away by anger or upset or sadness because things are not working the way you wanted them to work because that's just going to get you exhausted. So try, try and focus on the what is it that I can do instead of what is it that I cannot do. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Would anybody else like to answer this question? Me? <laughs> Go for it. Uh, I would like to share uh, the biggest challenge which I had, and that's maybe like a little bit philosophic topics. And that evolves around solitude because I live alone, you know, and um, you know, in the period of confinement, I was at home the whole day, you know, working home office. I had a lot of online contact with my colleagues and clients, but still I was alone to make breakfast, you know, lunch and dinner. So basically all the time. And so I was thinking, okay, how do I best deal with it? Or how do I actually keep the social contact with my family who lives in another country and with my friends? And here, well, the online tools were, you know, the solution. So every evening or every day, I made a routine of scheduling uh, some time, you know, talking to other people. This way, I did not feel the isolation. I always felt connected. But then after, and at the beginning, it was great because uh, uh, paradoxically, not having, you know, the commute and having more time, I could reconnect with my friends and family even better than you know when I was in the in the normal daily routine. But after a while, I realized that actually I am being tired of this constant online contact. You know, and this is what there was some question about it before. You know, like how you how you overcome to that. So then actually, the the question started to be okay. Well, how to find a balance between like uh, making sure I schedule enough time to connect with other people, but also just resource myself offline. So, you know, so then it was really the finding the right balance about online and offline time. <laughs> Not sure if it helps um, like anyone, but uh, for me, the answer was really to create some kind of uh, daily routine to see, okay, how much time do I want to spend online? Which, which people do I want to talk to? Which activities do I want to do? And then how much time do I want to spend offline? And what are the values added activities I can, I can do that way? So hopefully it helps someone who is in the, in the same situation and uh, facing the, the same challenge. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for that answer. Anybody else would like to answer this question? Okay, so let's move on. So the last question that we have is, would you recommend one live tool then? So they're asking us, Oh, and then they wrote the Zoom, BeLive, dot, 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 question mark. 
So I think they're they're trying to ask what which tool that you would recommend to use for live shows, like what we attempted to do today. Well, I'll jump in first. I, I'm a Zoom person because they have the support. And it's, except when the internet is busy during, the, during this time of COVID, the internet has been busy. And it's almost like you're in this long line. There's no social distancing. You just can't jump on the internet when you want. You have to wait your turn. So I, I love Zoom because you just, Pick your options, you know, you jump on the Facebook, Facebook marketplace, you know, depending on where you go. A lot of the pro platforms work the same, you know, some, and they all have the same function. Some of them are a little bit more difficult, like blue jeans, it's too much to read, you know, it's just out of control, you know, that's, I'm never going to put a check mark there. Sorry, blue jean. And why would you know that blue jean is a, whatever. The point is, <laughs> is that I am a Zoom person. Here, here. That's all. But I'm not a blue jean person. All right, so let someone else talk. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Anybody else would like to recommend the tool? Um, I'm happy to recommend. I'm, I love Zoom too. We used to use Skype, but I just find with Zoom, which I heavily started to use during uh, lockdown, uh, the quality is really good. You can record it. Everybody else seems to be familiar with it. It relates to my calendar system, Calendly. It's just easy. And But, again, being really patient with yourself in the beginning days, I didn't find it super easy at first because just like any new thing, I had to learn how to mute and unmute and co-share and all these little tricks that you can learn. But there's so much support online. So if you ever have an issue, you can just Google it and usually find your way through it. So for me personally, I found Zoom fantastic and they seem to be constantly improving it. And it's good for team meetings because you can just have a one ID and then it's like meeting in a meeting room. We just say, oh, we'll jump on Zoom now. Uh, and that's really quick. It's quick and easy to do. So we found a really good experience with Zoom. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for that answer. Well, I must and say I also love Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're Zoom people. But I must say something else, though, okay? Uh, some of my uh, humanologists and optimism coaches, uh, when they first begin and they start offering talks and stuff like that, they're not ready to invest a lot of things, a lot of money on tools and materials because uh, Zoom is great and it's for free up to 45 minutes. But if you're doing one-on-one -on -one sessions, sometimes those last a little bit longer than 45 minutes. And it's really discouraging having to reconnect in the middle of a session. I have a friend who's... Uh, studying at university here in Panama, and she's always complaining that her teachers are using Zoom, and every 45 minutes they have to reconnect because the teachers are not buying the Zoom connection, and then they have to send them their uh, new ID and their new password for the next part of the lesson being taught, and they have to reconnect you know, because they're longer, they're university lessons, so they're longer lessons, and they might have to reconnect three, four times for just one lesson. And it's really hard to study like that. It's really hard to focus on the lessons. So although I love Zoom, I must say, well, if you're going to use it professionally, it does have a cost. And uh, if you're starting out, you might not want to invest. And uh, you can try... You know, if you don't need longer sessions, you can try Zoom or you can try it uh, for shorter sessions. And then once you have enough clients or once you're really ready to jump up into the professional version, you can use it. If not, you can just try with any of the free ones. I would also say, you know, if you're just starting out and uh, you just have one-on-one -on -one sessions and uh, small group sessions, you can still use WhatsApp with a camera, or you can use Messenger 
It also works for one-on-ones and you don't need to invest a cent, you know, because they're available to everyone. So I would suggest, depending on what you're going to be using it for, I would suggest one of these choices, you know, for free or paying. And uh, that would be my answer. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for that answer. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> if nobody else wants to answer, then I actually would like to answer this question. <laughs> so here goes. <laughs> like Jessica just said, um, Zoom, you can use it really well. It, it is a great tool. In all fairness, it is the one that I also prefer because of what everybody else commented. It's, it's easy to use. It, it, it works well. It doesn't crash that often as other platforms. Um, the, the functionality of it is, is simple enough that, yes, you might have to take a little bit of time at the beginning to understand it, but with one hour or two hours, it, that should be more than enough to be able to know how to use it, unlike other platforms, which they're a little bit more complicated and sometimes people get lost and that discourages you. However, like Jessica said, you do have to pay if you are gonna use it for more than 45 minutes. Now, there's another option such as Google Classrooms that you can use. If you're wanting a free platform, I would recommend that one because it is completely free. You can have quite a few different people on the same uh, video call per se. It can be a group video call or it can be one-on-one -on -one sessions like Jessica mentioned. But not only that, but it acts like a virtual classroom. So you can even have a whiteboard that you can write on so that you can write notes for your students if, if it's an online class, for example. Things like this, you can share files, different things like that. However, as it tends to happen with uh, free technology, it gets oversaturated and it does crash quite a bit. So I would say that that's the negative aspect of Google Classroom. However, if you are looking for a tool that's free and that you can start with that is easy to use, then I would recommend that you try doing that, uh, using that one if you require something that takes longer than 45 minutes. Because not only that, but if you have a Google account, if you have a Gmail account, you automatically already have Google Classroom. You don't even have to create a new account. You don't have to open up somewhere else. You can just work with what you've got, which is what we're talking about right now. So you've got two options there. One that's everyone from what I've seen likes Zoom, including myself. But there is a cost. And then there's Google Classroom, which does crash, but it is free. So there, you've got two different tools that are great for online video calling and classes and things like that. So I just wanted to share my little experience because I also have a little bit of experience working online lately. So I hope that was helpful. <laughs> well, I believe that we actually have no more questions. So that actually concludes this session of Human Conversations. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone who's, who's been here, to all of our panelists. Thank you for sharing your opinion and taking the time to be here with us today and just chatting with us. We, we really appreciate it here from the International Institute of Humanology and I also think our, our audience appreciates it. So thank you very much. Thank you to the public for joining us today and listening to what our experts have to say. Remember that if you have any other questions or anything like that, or if you would just like to get more information or get in touch with all of these wonderful experts, feel free to comment or text us or email us or messenger us or, you know, we're talking about technology, technology here. We have all sorts. So please do get in touch with us. 
what we want to do with these things is for it to be a conversation, not just us, not just us talking. We want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. So please, please do get in touch. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, really, really, really. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here and lovely to meet you all and to reconnect with you too, Jessica. Lovely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a lovely day. <laughs> you too.